Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. What's this? I made it by myself. Oh, you did? Come here. Oh, let's have a look at this then. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, mate, that's fantastic. Thank you. Buffy? <laughs> no, thank you. And not often you're this late up. No, uh, I slept like a log. I tell you what, Blanche, the best night I've had in ages. Be not drinking. I'm the same when somebody accidentally on purpose forgets to buy gin. Are you very old? Hmm. No, 21-ish. Same as your gran. Flatterer. Do you want a coffee? Oh, yeah, love one. I'll get him. No, it's all right. I'm making one for myself anyway. Uh, I've been thinking about Susan this morning. Ah, yeah. Who's Susan? She's my twin sister. Would have been her birthday too. But she's been mummy now. And you know what, though? She would have loved you. She would. Are you going to have candles on your cake to blow out? I'd have thought you'd have seen enough of the fire brigade. Yes, thank you for that, Blanche. So, how would you get on? 20 seconds faster. <laughs> What's that? It's pigeon poo. <laughs> What's funny? I can just picture it now. Oh, move inside it below. Go for the head. Oh, just missed. <laughs> yeah, it was one of Jack's. Well, can you tell that? They all look the same to me. The second I left the house and no one else around here keeps flaming sky rats. Morning. Hiya. Hiya. Didn't see you there. <laughs> just thought I'd have a brew with Ty. Now, that is the fastest way of catching a chill. Hanging around here while you've still got a sweat on. See you later. All right. See ya. Come on, let's go inside. You try and keep your dog under control today. Am I supposed to know what you're talking about? Braveheart. He's not got enough to do at Underworld, so he's sticking his nose into lad rags. That's really happening, then. What, you knew? I knew you were sniffing round. It's worse than that. Maria's going to him for every decision before she'll say yay or nay. Don't let him get to you. I don't. Well, it's easy for you to say. Well, he's cozying up to Maria. He's out of your hair. So Maria's just taking him on as a consultant, or what? It's nothing official at all. They're just having secret little meetings. Have you had it out with them? Well, can I? Don't know where they're meeting, when they're meeting. Don't even know why they're meeting. I'll tell you what. If I catch them sneaking around, I'll let you know. Thanks. It was mine and Liam's business. I feel like I'm being pushed out. Tell Jason to get the base units in first so the template for the granite can be sent off. And I'll do the wall units while he's doing that, boss. No, no, uh, Gary, no, uh, please. Uh, uh, just, just get Jason to ring me. You know, when my dad's got a bad back, he stays in bed. And when he's not got a bad back? Hey, bad backs sound funny. Oh, I don't know. Joe makes me laugh every time he tries to climb stairs. God, David, sometimes. Well, I'm glad somebody finds it funny. Well, you got to keep a sense of humour, haven't you? You off, then? Aye. Jason's waiting at Roy's with the van. Yeah, I'm off as well, so I'll walk down the street with you, if you like. All right. Yeah. See ya. Hey, I suppose it must be all right having Boss on his back all day instead of yours. They seem to be getting on all right. Yeah, well... You never can tell what's going on in David's head, can you? Hiya. Mm. We have bread at home and milk. It's not for us. Daryl's mum. Ah, yes, our guest upstairs. Thanks for that. Oh, well, don't thank me. Thank these two who will also be paying for the groceries, yes? Yeah, of course we will. Chuck us some paracetamol in the mall, will you? I don't know when or how, but I must have been doing summit right at some time for you to have turned out to be so lovely. I only got you off the street to stop you from making us look stupid. Bread, milk and soup, and if there's anything else... Um, well, I've told to get Nick's where I'm staying. I've left it nice up there. Thank you. See ya. Um, give the others my love. See ya. 
place she's living, is it really as bad as she says? Nah. It's worse. Morning. Oh, Audrey. Oh, morning. Morning. Could you, uh, fit me in for a quick trim, lady? Eh? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Great. It's his birthday for having a party. Oh, hi. Oh, how lovely. Nice family do, eh? Because I think our families are very important. Don't you, Ken? Yeah, sentiment is impossible to argue with. Yeah, and so easy to take them for granted. <laughs> hey, look, if, if that's aimed at me, I've never been more grateful for my family than I am now. Peter, of course, no, it wasn't. Oh, look, I'll see you later, all right? <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks. Now, let's see what this builder's up to, shall we? Oh, morning. Hiya. Hi, Ken. You're somewhere nice. Is a secret. <laughs> Buying a cake. <gasps> Is it somebody's birthday? Daddy's we're having a party. Oh wow! How lucky are you? You can come. Oh well, that's very kind of you, Simon. Well, you're more than welcome, isn't you, mate? Eh? Yeah, please. See, well, you can't really say no now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. See you later. I uh, take it you two have not made it up properly since that business with Luke Strong. Hey, don't have a go at me. Not after the way you and Deirdre's been these last few days. What's going on, anyway? Nothing. And if you ever find yourself in a long relationship, you might realise that arguments don't actually have to be about anything. Come on, Simon. But you're not looking hard enough for them. Yeah, 24-7. Nothing illegal. For now. I'll call you later. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. No. Photocopier salesman. OK. I want to know more about my partner. And the little I do know about Mr Strong, I don't like. Well, that's none of my business. Yeah. Maybe so. Anyway, what can I do for you? I just wondered if you'd have a look at these for me. Tom's been pushing to go ahead with this order, but it's 25,000 and I'm not sure. Morning. Oh, yeah. Hi, could you give us a minute? Well, I could. Lad drags business. One of the secret meetings Tom was telling me about. I promised I'd let him know. Excuse me. My friend. Your business partner reckons he's being sidelined by you sneaking around with the man he calls Braveheart. This has nothing to do with you. It is to do with Tom, though. Maybe he'll want to join in this meeting. Maria, maybe we should do this some other time. Well, maybe you should talk to Tom instead. Hey, hey, new chair. That must have cost a bit. It's to help his back. Funny things, backs. You know, even the best doctors can't be sure what's wrong. If out really is. Joe's self-employed. He has nothing to gain by pretending. Got my mobile, love, in case you need it. Doesn't know as much as she thinks she does, eh? I'm not exactly proud of being in this mess. And you'll do well to remember who's getting you out of it, me and our Gary. I won't be sacking him, don't worry. I'm not. You should be worried. Aren't you alone? I've got to pay Gary and Jason. I've got to buy material so I can finish the job. If I can't pay the lads, can't buy materials, can't finish the job... A bad back would be the least of your problems. Your loan shark mate doesn't get his money if I'm in hospital. <laughs> he always gets his money. One way or another. Ta-da! Oh, thanks, mate. So, uh, are you just here until Joe gets back on his feet, then? No, full-time. Mm, the work for Joe isn't exactly reliable. Yeah, and people always need their hair cutting, don't they? True. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's a good job you're big on family, Audrey. There's not many openings for tea boys these days, is there? Peter, if you're so madering about what I said this morning... Oh, no, no, I'm not at all. I mean, you were right. I would be in a real mess if I didn't have me dad and Blanche and Deirdre to help with Simon. Yeah, but your dad knows that, of course. Well, yeah. I mean, I can't hide it from him, can I? 
You don't think I'm, I'm being unfair, do you? I mean, you know, just leaning on him at his age. No, of course not. Because I do worry that it's putting too much pressure on him. He disappears, you know, for hours at a time. He started losing his temper over the smallest things, especially with Deirdre. Peter, it is not you. I don't know. He's summing up with him. I started wondering, you know, I mean, is he ill? Is he just not saying anything to anybody? Look, if selfishness is an illness, he's just got a bad dose of that and nothing worse. What's going off, Audrey? I mean, this morning you two were... Well, I don't know. Odd. Peter, right, it is none of our business, but it is not you. The truth of the matter is, your dad's having an affair. Look, look, don't, don't worry about it, Audrey. I just hate to think of him and Deirdre splitting up after all they've been through together. Yeah, well, I'll have a word with him. But you know what my dad's like? Never settles for what he's got, even if it is actually more than he deserves. So, okay, thanks, Audrey. See you. See you. I suppose as we're in the middle of the street, this can't be classed as a secret meeting. Well, I'm glad to see you see the funny side of it. Well, it's hardly side-splitting. Well, I am so sorry. Rick, I'll still take a look at Tom's ideas and tell you what I think. Well, thank you. But I don't want to make things worse between you and Luke. Don't you worry about Mr Strong. If he wants to play silly games, fine. But we'll play by my rules. I'll call you. I, um, look, I know I've been a bit off with you, and I, I'm sorry. A bit? <sighs> Let's not spoil Peter's day. When Ryan was Simon's age, he insisted on having a party for everybody's birthday, including <laughs> his gran and granddad, who were over in Ireland. Hey, you want my idea that Simon invite you, you know? Yeah, well, if it had been, I wouldn't be here. So I'm still in your bad books over this Luke nonsense, then? Nah. You've had a rough time of it lately. Been there. You expect to get hurt and you end up hurting yourself. Right, stand back, everyone, unless you want to get your eyebrows singed. <laughs> oh! Ta-da! <laughs> oh, look at that. Great. <laughs> you got to blow one candle out 44 times. <laughs> oh, well, you better help me, then. You ready? One, two, three. Go on. <gasps> Go on. Oh. Go on. Oh. Come on. Oh. Hey. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, yeah. And if you gave up cigarettes, you wouldn't need Simon to help you. Oh, just ignore him. I always do. Oh, well, we can't always live up to the standards of St. Kenneth of Weatherfield, can we? Oh. <laughs> right. Town or traffic centre? It's your choice. What's going on with Luke, Tom? Luke? Nothing. Nothing. Only I called in to see Tony earlier and got accused of sneaking around behind your back. Well, you are. So have it out with me, then. It's got nothing to do with Luke Strong. I told him what was happening. If you don't like it, don't do it. <sighs> Tony gives me advice. A second opinion, that is all. I don't trust him for a second. And, should you need reminding, not so long back he thought he was capable of anything. Yeah, well, I got it wrong, OK. And I'll tell you something else, shall I? Tony isn't convinced that Luke's on the level either. What do you mean? This is between me and you, right? Tony's having Luke investigated. <laughs> now, he wouldn't be having him followed, would he, if he didn't think there was something fishy about him? In what way? Just... Just keep him out of my business. And as for the shopping trip, forget it. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> Don't see Liam. Liam? Hmm. She's in the yard. And I thought she'd left town when all the time. Having a rabbit named after you is not to be taken lightly. Sorry.
<laughs> Where's everybody gone? This affair you're having, how long's it been going on for? Sorry? Sorry? Oh, please don't do that. I don't know what you're talking about, bit. Presumably this game for Mordred. Oh, that's not what really matters, is it, Dad? No, I had a friendship with a woman. Not that it's any of your business or anybody else's. Oh, get off your high horse for once. And you have a pop at me about not having a long-term relationship. And all the time you're sneaking around Weatherfield like a geriatric tomcat. It's pie, it's quality, isn't it, Jack? Smashing you. You're not eating much, though. I'm in training. Well, you've still got a wheat well, though, aren't you, Jack? I'm sorry, what? Are you all right? Yeah, well, I'm fine, yeah, yeah. We've not done out to upset you, have we? No, 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 no. What's my pigeons? Three of them haven't come home. Three? Three, yeah. I mean, you lose one every now and again, but three. I'm sorry, lovey. I've got no appetite. I, th I think I'll go and have an hour down bleach. And... Right. Suppose you'll be happy. Be less birds to bomb you. Hey, that's a rotten thing to say. What's up? You said this was chicken pie. Yeah. Well, it's dark. Chicken's white. It tastes nice, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but... Pigeon pie is much posher than chicken. Oh, please don't tell me he fed Jack his own pigeons. <laughs> what do you think I am? Because it's chicken! It's dark because I've cooked it in red wine. It colours the meat, you numpty! Yeah, well, I knew that. <laughs> pigeons are in freezer. Thought I'd roast them tomorrow. When I've nicked Simon Barlow's bunny to go with him. Uh, another one for Tara and a uh, scotch for me, please. Tara was singing your praises earlier. So either she's forgiven you for your little girly or she doesn't know. Shh, Her confession may be good for the soul, but it is bad for the relationship. And it was only once that we'd split up. You don't have to explain now to me. Now we're back together again, I'm hoping that she need never know. Tara's my friend. Why would I want to hurt her? So you say nothing? My lips are sealed. As long as you're a good boy. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming. I enjoyed it. More than I thought I would. Oh, good. Me too. As much as I hoped I would. See you. Are you going to say anything to Deirdre? No. Thank you. Oh, it's not for your sake. Simon's been through enough this year. First his mum, then me turning into a pathetic drunk that nearly killed him. The only good thing in his life is his grandma and granddad. No, this is a wind-up now, isn't it? It's too early to quite to that place I'm staying in yet. You've no idea how awful it is. No. Go home. Now. When there's a woman in distress, it calls for a superhero. What? Grocery man. Faster than a car and a milk, stronger than a week old cheese. Dad. Hi. Um, Teresa's got a problem. And this becomes Dev's problem. She can't go home. Well, when I say home, I mean that damp rot-ridden place in that horrible, scary sink estate. Because? You need more because? OK, the drug dealer next door, he's turned nasty. Yeah? I complained about the needles. <laughs> you know. And uh, as the flat's still empty... All right. Deb, this is a setup. No, no, no. Amber's quite rightly pointing out that Teresa has no home and I have two. So she can stay? Absolutely! Oh, yes! Oh. On one condition. Oh, I'll keep you spotless. Well, that's not the condition, but it helps. Daryl moves in with you. Hey? What? You mean a pardon. Take it or leave it. Thanks, Devil. Take it. Oh. 
Blanche and Deirdre have gone to bed. This your way of getting back at me? Sorry? Tempting me, leading to a lecture on human frailty, eh? How we all have our weaknesses. I just want to make it clear. Martha and I, nothing happened. Right. Just good friends, was it? Well, if you must know, it was. I'd always dismiss this soulmate thing as nonsense, but from the moment we met, there was a special something. How wonderful for you. You've no idea what a struggle this has been, Peter. If I'd met Martha under any other circumstances, I'd have happily spent the rest of my days with her. You said nothing happened? It didn't. Not in the tawdry sense that you mean. What, and you think that makes it all right? Come on, if anything, that makes it worse. I mean, a one-night stand you can put down to a moment of madness, but the way you're talking... I'm not apologising for that. I told you, it's over. And that's the end of it. Well, next tonight, the Bill are shocked to learn what's really going on at a local school. Then will Linda and Aid be shocked to learn what being a waiter actually involves? They'd never worked so hard in Hell's Kitchen at nine o'clock.